Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to some baseball reviews. I'm Alex Hart from iHeart Sports here, and we're going to be going over the May 23rd baseball games for Sunday. But before we do, let's go down there, like, subscribe, but also make sure after this video you check out the updated power rankings. We do them every Sunday, and a new episode came out last night. And there was quite a shuffle uh, two weeks prior to this with the top five pretty much stayed the exact same back to back weeks. But as you can see, maybe behind me, uh, a little bit different of uh, going on what's going on. So make sure you go in and check out some of the explanation of that. Uh, it's a holiday up here in Canada. So video's coming out an hour or so later than normal. I got to sleep in an extra hour. So that's great. We're doing a fun little juice cleanse over the next couple days. So excited for that. But enough about me. We have 15 games to go through and we're going to kick things off with the Nationals and the Baltimore Orioles. Washington and, Nash and the Orioles got off to a 4-3 first inning here and Nationals didn't really look back. They tied it up in the third, but then they were able to squeeze out a little bit of a run. The Washington Nationals end up sweeping the series overall and Kyle Schwarber hits his eighth home run of the season in this game. Trey Turner continues to be impressive. Hit two hits this game, 324 batting average and OPS of 909. Might be top OPS of all shortstops in the league right now. For sure. On the other side, Orioles didn't have anyone stand out with home runs or anything like that. But as you can see, the top of their lineup all had multi-hit games. So overall, their offense continues to go. But it had to uh, really affect their power ranking score. And you'll have to check that out. Matt Harvey gets his fifth loss of the season. won 4.25 earned runs. So he's really come back down to earth. 6.31 ERA. It's starting to understand why it would, took the Orioles taking a shot on him to even give him a chance to play this year. Patrick Corbin gets his third win of the season, 5.2, four earned runs, three Ks. Nationals trying to keep pace with this uh, National League East, and based on the record, they're, they're right there in the thick of things, for sure. Next up, Phillies 6, Red Sox 2. Phillies avoid getting the sweep from the Red Sox, and all on the back of Zach Wheeler in a first inning offense where they put up four runs. Wheeler's been uh, great this year. Brad Miller gets his fourth home run of the season and it's a three run shot in that first inning and then Cordero for the Red Sox gets his first and Devers his 13th so Devers is starting to close the gap he's only two behind Acuna unless Acuna got one today I I'm not sure if he did yet uh can't remember Zach Wheeler goes 7.1 12 K's one earned run and that seems to be the savior of the Phillies in this series Wheeler Rodriguez goes four four earned runs six K's he's now five and three on the season However, his ERA is quite inflated um, at 5.06. So for the Red Sox, they uh, hoping he can come down and with uh, sale a little bit of a ways away. They might be able to bolster that rotation up. Yankees 5, White Sox 4, and this was a ninth inning walk-off for the Yankees, Aaron Judge specifically. But Chicago had tied it up in the top of the ninth after being down, and the Yankees had a 3-0 lead about halfway through the game, and the White Sox battled back to 3-2, and then it was 4-2, and then it was 4-3, and then 4-4, and the Yankees walk it off with an Aaron Judge RBI. Jose Abreu hits his ninth of the season, Grandal hits his sixth, and Vaughn hits his third. So all the home runs in this game coming from the side of the White Sox, whereas the Yankees using Glaber Torres as his three-hit ninth to get it done. Jamison, Tyon goes five, zero earned runs, four strikeouts. So no earned runs for Tyon. That's a big step in the right direction. And then the Yankees end up using their star bullpen, um, getting the close done. And they actually gave Chapman the blown save, and then he gets the win. So uh, what was it, a ninth inning home run by Vaughn that gets them the blown save. Keiko goes only four innings, one earned run, four Ks. I'm not sure what that is. Gets four innings, 100 pitches in four innings. Uh, that's pretty crazy. On top of that, uh, I came across this interesting stat that the Chicago White Sox are 13 and five when they're playing the Twins, the Royals, or the Tigers. So basically in the division, other than the Indians. But outside of that, they're only 13 and 14. So yeah, they got to find a way to beat uh, teams that are actually going somewhere and not the bottom feeders of their division. Next up, Rays six. Blue Jays 4, and I gotta admit, I watched most of this ninth inning, and it was pretty heartbreaking. The, the Jays had a nice Grichik home run in the eighth inning to take a two-run lead, and 
based on how it's going and the Jays have blown a couple games over the past few days, you thought, oh, okay, it's, it'll be good. But they get into just complete trouble. It's probably one of the worst ninth innings I've seen in a long time. Just walking in three runs, two runs, whatever it was. Uh, and they give up four runs here. Tiasco Hernandez, sixth home run of the season. Gertrude hit his eighth, as I just talked about. Ryu goes 6.2, two earned runs, seven Ks. And the Jays need to start winning these games where Ryu pitches or else they're, they're just going to slowly fall behind in this American League East because we're stacked up in here. And on the other side, Waka goes two, um, and then they bring in Josh Fleming for the six or four earned runs, and he gets the win, which is kind of funny because, uh, yeah, he went from the third to the eighth or whatever. Um, but the Jays are in trouble. They're, they're, they lost three straight, uh, five straight overall, Boston, all in their division games. Twins, eight, Indians, five. This one, the Indians were at 3 nothing, and then the Twins put up that five spot in the fourth and never looked back, really, until the Indians, bottom of the ninth, tied up, and they send it to extras. Kepler hits his fifth home run of the season, and in the tenth inning, Garlic hits his second home run of the season. It's a three-run shot, and it ends up being the difference in that tenth inning. No home runs for the Indians. It was all just generated. Rosario. He has a four-hit night and a two-RBI night, and he's the, the big part of the Indians getting in there. Playsack goes 3.2, three earned runs, 1K, so not a whole big showing from Playsack. On the other hat, side, J.A. Happ, 103 pitches, six innings pitched, four earned runs, 10Ks from Happ, but still a little bit of an inflated ERA. And the Twins do win this series, so it's a, to me it feels like the first series the Twins have won in a long time. Uh, so, yeah. That's good. Marlins 5, Mets 1, and this, oops, this ends up being a Marlins series win, and they were very close to even winning that first game uh, and finding the series sweep, but they're they're closing in on the division lead. Uh, make, they made up some ground against uh, the Mets in this series, which is very good for them. Uh, their pitching came out to play, especially against the Mets. They got put up a five-run inning in the second, and that was basically all they need. The Mets couldn't really score. They scored one run in that eighth inning, and there were no home runs in this game. This, these two teams combined are really rough when it's when you're in the home run search. You're looking for home runs in the game. Don't watch these teams. Potique goes seven innings pitch, zero run runs, 4K. So that's like three starts in a row where the Miami pitchers have just been lights out. Marlins, got to watch them. In the Power Rankings video, they're definitely trending up for sure. Brewers 9, Reds 4. And uh, I think this Reds series is kind of what the Brewers needed. A little bounce back week. They're back up to 500. They took advantage of this division foe. Putting up 5 uh, in the first 3 innings to have a 5-1 lead. And they really didn't look back. Cincinnati tried to make it closer, but then the 6th inning happened. And it was pretty much over after that. Winker continues to crush the ball. He's up to 13 home runs. Jesse Winker. And Castellanos hit one in the ninth inning at 12th, his 12th of the season. On the other side, Avias Garcia goes, hits his seventh, and Yelich, he's on the board. Yelich has hit his first home run of the season. I know a lot of it's been injuries, but he's back in action, and he finally has a home run. I, can't, I wouldn't have even guessed that he had zero. Castillo continues to lose for the Reds. He goes five earned runs over five innings pitched. His ERA is up to 7.61. I don't know. Like I keep saying this every time that he comes to the mound and every time we review it the next day. When is his leash going to end? Uh, I know they have a lot of um, faith. Maybe not faith at this point. They, they've invested a lot into him. Uh, hoping he turns the corner, but he, maybe he won't at this rate. Freddie Peralta, 4.2, two earned runs, seven strikeouts, and that's enough for the Brewers to win this series and move on. The Braves... Seven Pirates one Braves win the series three to one, and it was an offensive showing the past two days. Twenty-seven to two, the Braves won. Uh, they managed to keep Acuna off the hits parade, but he still made the bases with a walk. Austin Riley hit two home runs in this game. Uh, he had a nice two two hits, uh, five RBI nights, and then on the other side, Dansby Swanson hit his eighth as well. And by other side, still mean the Braves. Uh, Max Freed goes 7, 1 earned run, 2K. So Max Freed, his past two starts have been very good in, ever since he's come back from that injury. Brubaker, 5.1, 7 earned runs, 7 Ks. So he's up to the good old 420 ERA. Um, Brubaker, that's a rough outing for him, uh, but that's what you're going to get. When you're breaking into the majors, you're playing tight, tight lineups like the Braves. You're going to get hit around once in a while. It's part of growing up, right? 
Tigers 2, Royals 3. And Detroit put up 2 right in the beginning of this game. So it took until late in the game for the Royals to make it close to put 2-1 in the 7th. And then bottom of the ninth is when they, they get Carlos Santana up to bat hits. His ninth home run of the season for a 2-run bomb off Michael Fulmer. I had just been giving Michael Fulmer props. Have. He seemed to have, have last inning lockdown for the Tigers as of late. Uh, but not so much in this case. He gives up that home run, which will result in the blown save and the loss. Casey Mays goes 6.1, one earned runs, 6 Ks. Bubik goes 5, 2 earned runs, and then no decision. And then Zimmer will pick up the win with a nice two-inning performance and coming out of the bullpen. Rangers 3, Astros 2. Rangers sweep the Astros, which is pretty much an eye-opening experience for me. Uh, had the Astros in the top five for a long time on the power rankings, but it might be time to uh, have a little realization that there are other teams at foot here now. Um, Offensive-wise, they didn't have a whole lot going. There was no home runs in the game. Uh, if you just do a quick look at the box score, there's only one player in the entire game that had a two-hit night, and that was Altuve. Uh, other than that, uh, Calhoun had a nice couple walks, a nice on-base percentage. Gallo, I was on the base three times, uh, but his average is 2.09. Javier goes 4.2, 6 walks, 1 earned run, 5 Ks. The 6 walks is definitely of concern and might have got him into trouble a couple times in this game. Fulte for the Rangers goes 7, 0 earned runs, 2 Ks. Uh, and no decision, unfortunate for him, but they had the late, took him until the late innings to take that lead. Uh, extra innings, really, to take the overall lead in the 10th. Uh, they shut him out in the top, took it down in the bottom. Move along, we got the Rockies for Diamondbacks 3. Not often do I get an opportunity to wear the Rockies hat, so they're coming off a nice sweep of the battle in the bottom of this division, so I had to give some credit where credit is due. They won it, they were winning, uh, so they get the hat uh, for this video. So Trevor Story hits his fifth home run, it's in the ninth inning shot. Uh, that ends up being the difference, a walk-off home run by Trevor Story. Um, pretty awesome for him, uh, story time. P. Smith, fourth home run of the season for the Diamondbacks. And John Gray goes six, three earned runs, three Ks. And John Gray's quietly having likely one of his best seasons so far, at least ERA-wise. I haven't watched him more than a couple of times this season, but when you're pitching Coors, you usually have a little rough time. But John Gray seems to be doing all right. Widener goes 1.2, zero earned runs. Uh, don't know what happened there. He went 40 pitches and not even three innings, so he must have gotten into trouble pretty early in this game. Uh, and then they had a short leash, and then they went right to their bullpen uh, and used that up. But this one, like I said, walk off in the bottom of the ninth. Trevor Story getting her done. Dodgers 11, Giants 5. This is another sweep, and the Dodgers came out early in this one and often. 11 to nothing after four innings. And when you're against the Dodgers and they give them that much of a lead... I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the time you're losing. And that was the case for the Giants in this one. Slater for the Giants hit his fifth of the season. Gavin Lux his third. And Max Muncy leading the Dodgers, the first Dodger to hit 10 home runs a season. And he's been pretty hot with a 2.92 batting average. And he crossed over the threshold of the 1,000 OPS. So that's nice. If you take a look here, you see Gavin Lux at the top with a two-hit four RBI night. They're, they're missing uh, Mookie Betts. Uh, I'm not sure if that injury thing's still being a little bit of a problem for him or if he's just getting a nice little night off. Urias is now 7-1 on the season. He went 16. He's pitched 200 runs, 10 Ks for a very good outing. Descalfani, 2.2, 10 earned runs. So that's going to really inflate that ERA. That was amazing before that. But we can't hold this one performance against him. Like I just said earlier in this, everyone gets beat around once in a while. Um, I just misclicked off that, so we're on to Angel 6, Athletics 5, and the crowd was excited in this one because Otani came in with a nice bases loaded pinch hit, and the crowd went nuts. Uh, and he ended up being a sack fly, so nothing too crazy, but he had a night off otherwise than that. Um, the offensive, Jared Walsh hits his 10th of the season for the Angels, and for Oakland, Olsen, his 12th, Brown, his 8th. This one I thought was going to be another case of the Angels just falling apart. They were down 4 nothing early in the game, but they managed to put up 5 runs late in this game over the last 3 innings to take the lead by 1 and hold the lead. That's the most important part. They actually tied it up in the 8th. They got tied up in the 8th, and then at the bottom of the 8th, they got another run. So... 
Bundy goes 2.14 earned runs, and it's Bundy, poor Bundy's kind of on that list with Castillo right now and just struggling to get a uh, performance in. Chamanea goes 5, 1 earned run, 6Ks. He does what he does. He, he got almost a quality start, winning away from that, but he gets his team the lead as he leaves, and enough to get it done, but uh, their bullpen not so good on this given night, and which is okay because the A's still win a series, and they're still trucking along pretty well. Padres 9, Mariners 2, and this was another Tatis show. He's just been batting amazingly in this cleanup spot since I've noticed. Three hits, six RBIs, including a grand slam. Two home run night for Tatis Jr. I just put him on the cover of this friggin' episode a couple days ago, but I don't know how I don't put him on the cover again. Maybe I'll do some more Padres and, and I'll group, but like he had, he's like the MVP of the day. Like Got to give him the credit. Uh, so he's up to 13, uh, chasing down Acuna. And it, honestly, if it wasn't for the injuries early in the season, he could be very well at the top. He's above 300, batting average, 1-1-1-1-1, one, 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 OPS, just crushing. Slam Diego is definitely back. Adam Dunn goes 5, 1 earned run, 4K. So he managed to keep the Padres in check for the most of the game. And well, But he's up against Yu Darvish, who will also keep your team in check. 7 innings pitch, 1 earned run, 5Ks. Picks up its fifth one in the season. Darvish, uh, for me, he's been quietly getting it done in San Diego. Um, very much in the Cy Young candidate conversation yet again coming for Darvish. Cubs 2, Cardinals 1, and this was the Sunday nighter. And there were, you like baseball games with a lot of offense, this was not it. Uh, there was no runs until they get the forced second base got runner in the 10th inning, and that's when the runs came. Cubs put up 2 in the top of the 10th. Cardinals put up only 1, and they fell short. Uh, so obviously, oh, Baez did hit a home run. I was going to say, obviously there's no home runs, but if there's runs, there's still a chance, right? Javier Baez hit that 10th inning, two-run home run, which ends up being a difference. Adam Wainwright goes eight innings, zero in runs, seven Ks. He's such a strange pitcher. Some days he does these eight-inning outings and complete game outings we've seen this season, and then other days he just gets crushed. Very interesting. Zach Davies goes five, zero earned runs, three Ks. And then the bullpen comes in. Kimbrell ends up getting the win in this one for the Cubs with that extra inning walk-off, et cetera, et cetera. But that uh, basically wraps up Sunday, May 23rd. Baseball games, 15 of them in the books. Make sure, make sure, make sure you go down there. Hit that like button. Smash that subscription button. We love to see new people around here talking about their teams. Let me know what I should be focusing on and like what I might be missing. Because 15 games, a lot to watch out there. So... Make sure you check out the Power Rankings video that just came out yesterday. And yeah, we'll see you guys for the next video.